water, the magical elixir of life. It provides a conduit for commerce and a vast playground for the adventuresome. But hidden in each molecule is danger. Join me on this training journey to better prepare ourselves to safely deploy, operate, and maintain the rescue craft known as IRB-11. Okay, we're going to do a quick training on the trailer for IRB-11. For those that have never uh, either hitched up or dealt with a trailer at all, we're going to cover some of the basic stuff. First thing we have is the drawbar is currently mounted down here on a bracket. Hold the pin, pieces come out. Bring it up in here and plug it into the receiver on the truck. Get the pin in there and then put the other pin that way. Now you're covered. This is a two inch ball, that's the key. Uh, we have a couple of different trailers in the department. This one uses a two inch. Don't confuse it, it won't fit on the other. And don't use a inch and seven eighths ball because then it'll be too loose. It will fit on there, but you run the risk of it coming off unintentionally. Get the ball up here centered. With the tongue centered over the ball. Once it's on, this lever goes down. And then this safety pin goes through. And we do carry a spare safety pin. It is just dangling right there. Next step I'm going to do is plug in the wiring. It's a four pin flat connector. Plugs directly into there. In fact, I'm going to do a little wrap around just so that it's not dragging on the ground. You don't want it dragging, but you don't want it too tight to where a, a hard left or a hard right turn and pull the connector. And the next step is going to be the safety cables. Can you get those connected? Bring up the jack. You'll need to get it a little bit off the ground. There's a pin here that you pull goes like that. So now this thing is hitched and safe, connected, ready to go. The next step if you needed to uh, would be turn the uh, tail lights or uh, headlights and blinkers on, check your check your lights, you know, from a service day standpoint. Probably not something you're going to do actually in a uh, deployment for a call. Next thing I'm going to show is the winch on the tongue of the trailer. It has a little lever here, which is basically the, the ratcheting mechanism. Put a little tension on here. Flip the lever down, and now you're free spooling to let out cord or uh, webbing in this case. It's got a simple hook with a, a safety on it that connects to the round portion of the uh, metal bracket attached to the front of the boat. So you clip that into the round, flip the lever up to engage the ratchet, and as you're looking at the handle clockwise to to cinch it down. It does not need to be cranked down, just barely snugged up is, is sufficient. So the next step will be actually securing the boat down to the trailer. We're currently using these Pro Taper uh, straps that we have. Bracket down here with the silver locking carabiner type end. Clips right into the hole. On the top, we've got this little piece of webbing with a loop. You slip the loop through the metal part onto the boat, not onto the carabiner. Hook the hook in there, give it just a slight little cinch down. Again, does not need to be cranked down super tight. After that, you've got the excess, and what you do with it is just wrap it around in a fashion that keeps it from dangling down on the ground, and it actually has a, a little telco strap to come in. keep from dragging. Taking it off is the exact opposite of that. Undo the Velcro strap, get rid of your excess, and you can push the button on the buckle to release the tension. Off comes the carabiner. Currently, all four of these are the same length strap. They can be used in any position. There's two on the front and two on the rear that go through a bracket on the frame of the trailer and through the eye bolt on the transom of the boat. I want to point out this carabiner and piece of webbing comes up to another carabiner and then another on the other side. 
This is a tow strap. It may be on the front of the boat, it may be on the back of the boat, it may not be on there at all. At some points we may end up keeping it in a, uh, in a little equipment box on the, on the boat itself. That is, if the boat breaks down and need to be towed back, or conversely you put it on the rear and you need to tow somebody else or pull something. That is not where you attach these straps, nor is it where you attach the, uh, the eye on the, trans or the uh, winch on the tongue. Again, on a service day, one of the things you want to point out or, or check is going to be the tire pressures and the tire conditions. Uh, I'm not going to go too into depth on that because people should know how to do that. However, these are uh, the, the spare and the uh, ones on the trailer itself are at 60 PSI. The tire says 90 on it. That's the maximum. The sticker on the inside of the frame of the trailer recommends 60. So 60 is what we should be going with. The axle on this trailer is a rubber torsion type axle. There's no leaf springs. Um, according to the manufacturer, there's really no maintenance that needs to be done on it. And the hubs on here, I'm pointing at the dust cap here. These are a lifetime, uh, do not need to be opened and serviced. If they have problems, they get replaced. So you'll notice there's no grease fitting like some of them have with the, the bearing buddies for them, that, uh, for those that get dipped into the water. So nothing to do there except the occasional uh, rock it back and forth. Best way to do it would be to lift the trailer up and kind of rock it a little bit um, just to make sure that the bearing hasn't loosened up. And if it, is, if it has, that would be a service issue and it would go down to the courtyard for maintenance. On the back, just like on the front, we have the, the two straps, one on either side of the motor. They attach down here to a bracket with the, the carabiner into the strap. And just like the, uh, the, on the front, the piece of webbing goes through the eye bolt back to the hook and it's cinched down. I'm not going to do it again because you guys get the picture, I'm sure. Additionally on the back, we have added a support for the motor. This is going to take weight off of the transom while it's being trailered. Um, the way that gets put in, on the bottom end you can see it's just a U-shaped piece of the, the trailer that just slips, or that, excuse me, of the, the support that just slips right over the trailer on the and then you need to lock the motor once it's in position you, you flip the lever into the lock position that keeps it from bouncing on the motor end of the trailer there's this little V of plastic material it goes down here just above the water inlet and then we just got a bungee rubber bungee up and over and there's a hole on each side that's just to kind of help secure it When the boat's being trailered, that should be in. This should be in the locked position. So the weight is down on the, on the support. That makes sure it's tilted down, then you lock it so that it can't bounce up. The other thing you look at here when the boat is on the trailer, and this is something that's best to happen at the boat ramp, but with a couple of people it can be moved afterwards. The boat needs to be centered on the trailer. Uh, a couple ways to do that is you can look at the space between these upright posts and the edge of the sponson or tube. Check them on either side and see that they're uh, close to the same. And then also, if you look down here on the bottom of the transom, there's this little rubber built up spot and it should basically be centered on the rubber roller. That way you know it's centered. Around the front of the boat, the bow of the boat should be up against this padded uh, or carpeted bunk. Doesn't need to be cinched down tight, just gently up against there. Another thing that we've noticed uh, in the short time that we've had this, this thing does lose a little bit of air with changes in temperature and just from time from sitting. So uh, on the surface day it should be getting topped off, uh, which will be covered in another video. But one thing I've noticed, you, somebody will walk through and go, oh the straps are a little too loose and their inclination might be to cinch down the straps. Well maybe the strap's not loose, maybe the boat's low on air and it has allowed the strap to, to loosen up. So if you were to tighten the strap thinking you were, you were, that it was too loose, and the next person comes in and says, oh, it needs air. Now you've tightened it and you're pumping it up, which is putting extra strain on here that really isn't needed. So if you're gonna put air in the boat, do that without tightening the straps. I beseech you all to review these materials periodically, as well as the user manuals for all water rescue equipment. Thank you, and be safe. This has been a Benicia Fire Department production.